In this demo, we're going to see how we can create an Arduino obstacle game using Simulink. Here's a brief clip of the demo in action to give you an idea of what it does. The game has three LEDs that have corresponding push buttons. These buttons are the controls of the game and you will need to press the correct buttons within a certain period of time in order to continue to the next round. The LCD display will show your score. In terms of software, we're going to need MATLAB, Simulink, Stateflow, and the Simulink support package for Arduino. In terms of hardware, we're going to need an Arduino Mega, a USB A to B cable, an LCD display, and all of the other hardware components listed on this slide. Here is the circuit schematic for our setup. Three LEDs and four push buttons are connected to digital pins on the Arduino with 1K pull down resistors. The LCDs connected to power, ground, several of the Arduino's digital output pins, as well as the output of a 10K potentiometer. In this example, the LCD is a 3.3 volt model. However, there are many LCDs that operate at five volts, so be sure you use the right voltage. Additionally, there's a buzzer connected to digital pin 43. If you do not already have the add-ons or support packages needed for this demo, you can get them by going to add-ons and clicking get add-ons. Here is the Simulink model for our obstacle game. All of the input and output pins that we use on the Arduino are going to correspond to the inputs and outputs of the Stateflow chart seen in the center of the screen. Stateflow is an environment within Simulink which helps us model and simulate decision-based logic systems. Let's see what's going on in the chart. The Stateflow chart starts in the initialization state where all of the variables are set up for the game. The game stays in this state until the player presses the on and off button and then it's going to wait for this button to debounce before starting the game. Once it debounces, the LEDs will light up in a random pattern. The player's job is to press the push buttons corresponding to the illuminated LEDs, and if they press the incorrect buttons or if they take too long to answer, they will lose the game and the buzzer will sound. To start a new game, they need to press the start button again. However, if they answer correctly, they advance to the next level where the amount of time that they will have to react is decreased by 0.1 second to make it more challenging. The game will not light a new sequence of LEDs until the user lets go of all of the push buttons. As the player progresses throughout the game, their level will be displayed on the LCD display. The block to do this is outside of the stateful chart and it is a custom simulink block made by the S function builder. In our case, the S function builder uses the Arduino libraries for the 16 by two LCD display. Now that we have a better understanding of the model, let's run the code in external mode to make sure it works correctly. We're going to do that by going to the top and selecting external mode. In external mode, Simulink is going to generate code that is going to run on the Arduino, but at the same time, it will allow us to monitor our system real time. A cool feature of state flow is that while in external mode, you can see exactly what state the program is currently on. As you can see in the video, every time I press the correct push buttons, my score is updated on the LCD display and a new pattern of LEDs is illuminated once I stop pressing the push buttons. You can also notice that the higher my level gets, the quicker I need to respond to the LEDs. Now that we know our model works in external mode, we can deploy it to our actual hardware. We can do this by pressing the deploy to hardware button. What this is going to do is Simulink is going to generate code just like it did in external mode. However, we will not need to be connected to our Simulink session in order to run our demo. And just like that, we have an Arduino obstacle game that we made using Simulink. Thanks for watching.